welcome back to Big Girl Hunters. Very excited because I'm a uh, we're on our way. We're sort of all packed and ready to go, and we're on our way to France tomorrow. So back to Road Deer, where you would have seen us fishing last year. And um, bit of a nightmare today, bit with the traffic. I had a bit of a bit of an emergency stop at, uh, at the service stations because a uh, bit of a diarrhoea attack, but <laughs> <laughs> went straight through me. I had a Burger King and it went straight through me. So I um, don't normally have Burger King, but there you go. Not won't be having one of them for a while. So, and uh, a few days ago, one of the other members dropped out who was bringing a big van and most of our gear was supposed to be going in the van. So we had to cram three people's gear into my old man's estate car, which is all planning sort of to go together. And uh been a bit of a nightmare, but of a bit of pushing it all in and, and uh, sort of jigsawing around. We, uh, we, got, we got it all in in the end. And this is uh, just sort of, what's the time now? It is, it's four minutes to eight. I've got to get up, alarm set for three o'clock, got to get up and uh, make the drive, drive to uh, to Dover. We'll meet my cousin and his boy and then we'll get be on the ferry off off to uh, off to Calais and then off to, to Rennes, the road here. So we'll, we'll keep you updated and we'll get on the ferry and hopefully everything will go smooth. We'll get there quick, Get might even get on the earlier ferry again and uh, hopefully get the rods out. Welcome to a, a blowy morning. So we made it into France, off our way to Rennes. <laughs> Bonjour! It's got our instructions from the dream fishing lads. Let's get to row deer. It's quick. We're on the, um, the A26. Whack on there for a couple of hours. Pull off a junction 14. There's only a couple of turnings and you're there really. So I've done it. It's in my fourth trip here. Look, there's, there's beautiful lakes here everywhere. Watering everywhere. Let's get it out. Be honest, all the swims. All right, we can get two Seven. people in. Nice. Yeah. 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 Well, everyone, it's um, sort of getting into the evening, well, late afternoon, evening time. What is it about? What, half five now? Yeah. Six? Like that. Coming up to sort of six o'clock. It's gonna. I reckon it'll be dark in an hour. Um, been a bit of a rush today, get, getting the rods out. Um, I've managed to get two rods out. Uh, but we had to rush off to the supermarket and get some supplies, get a few beers and that, and a few bit, a bit of grub and that. I was starving. Um, so basically what's happened so far is when I first got here obviously walked around um, my actual my number one swim choice um, was the one which is over I don't know if you can zoom over there but my um, cousin and his boy won the flip so uh, they got in that one um, I don't know if you can see him over there on that beachy type swim a lot of fish been getting caught out of there recently and it's a good patrol it oh oh my god Bosh oh my god go huh Nah. Them boys, la them boys last week smashed up your swim, mate. 
Now they're, all, they're coming down to Tobs' side. <laughs> Shan't be long. Shan't be long. Sorry about that. I just saw a big common Bosch right out and it's uh, really exciting. Right on Tobs' side. Um, can't put a lead that far, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I had a bit, I've had a bit of a lead round and it is solid weed on the bottom like that i've not found one solid spot toby found one a couple of little gravelly areas more way more into the margin it's like did it -did weed did -did -did weed but i'm just solid weed so i'm fishing solid bags um i've got one on a on a multi rig oh there's another fish rolling out there um one on a multi two bits of foam like to sit on top of the weed um and then t two with solid bags so uh we'll, we'll see what happens but I've got the two rods out again, so it's very, very weedy. I'm not, I'm not actually happy with my spots, but it's a rush. I didn't want to get the marker. I just had a lead. I probably had about ten casts around. I couldn't find one single hard spot. Not, I can't even get a drop. It's like, and with with the the bag on, you can kind of feel it as it hits the the weed. But it's almost like you're casting into like a, a cushion. Um, so I might have to get that rake out again, like last year. But we'll see, we'll see what happens yet. Yeah. Um, so I'm just quite focused on, on this water. Anyway, so I'm about about to um, get out the final rod. It's all clicked up. And I'll show you what I'm whacking out. Um, so it's, I think that's probably, it's a solid bag presentation with a drop-off inline system. I've got some leadless leader there. Um, very supple. Sit over the top of the weed, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. I mean, you look at that. You imagine that's a bit of weed there. My hand. Um... So I've got there a little bag of mixed small micro sort of um, pellet, trout pellet and halibut pellet. One grain of plastic, desperate times, one grain, <laughs> one grain of plastic in the bag, um, all done up. It, that is rock solid. So what I'm going to do now just for a bit of added attraction, I feel how much I love this stuff, is I'm just going to pump it with some of the other faithful almond. If you pop that in there and pump it up. Oh, loaded she right in. Oh, smells absolutely divine. Just a little bit here, I found part of the big bird. bed of weed, I'm just on the outside of it. How's it going, mate? Not too bad. Just had a first take. It was quite an quite an aggressive pull up on the rod, and at first I thought it was a pasty, but it was swimming towards me. And it's starting to feel a bit. To be honest, I do, I do still think it's small. Pasty, isn't it? Mm, yeah. It's a Cornish. It's a Cornish, mate. <laughs> It's a little past it, I don't know, it's a little bit bigger, but it's still, it's a tiny little thing. Right guys, first fish. It's only one of the babies that spawned a couple of years ago, but these fish are packing on weight quick. It's 17 pounds, quite pasty actually, which is a lot of the colours, the fish in here are quite nice dark colours, but this one's real pasty. And uh, yeah, first blood. Nailed on a nutcracker pop-up, over about two and a half kilo. Um, the white one. Oh, it's going to kick. And uh, on a multi-rig couple of nuggets of foam out on the spot. So, so two so. more runs as well, haven't we? Yeah, and we've had, we just had two more takes in the space of five minutes. It was all carnage. Uh, he, Toby's hook pulled mine. The lead popped off. Um, and I just it sort of kind of hook pulled. I don't know what, it was stuck in the weed where it didn't quite hook properly, but I think it could be some of the little ones like this. Hopefully we can get amongst some of the bigger residents. Look at the width of their shoulders. Even for a fish that size. Bye bye, my love. Oh, God, that water is cold now. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly November, and I'm in my shorts and t shirt in France. Get in that net. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Big Girl Hunters. Um, first morning on our French trip. So, what have we got to report? Not much, to be honest. It's um, So, I had that 17 last night. 
Um, my cousins had these. They had a couple of small ones. Yeah. A couple of really small ones. Again, because these fish are they're so healthy. They successfully spawn in. Because there's there's a lot of big fish in there, and basically the water clarity is so good. It's quite, it, it's so natural, and is it's quite salty because there's a lot of chalk on the bottom. So there's a lot of minerals. So the fish fight like mad. They're always in such good nick. Um, they're just so. I, I know a lot of the sort of commercial fr French waters. The fish are very pressured, so they're like you said. They have people there sometimes all the way through the winter, or even you know starting uh, March, going all the way right through to sort of November, December. Um, so they just don't spawn, but they spawn like mad here. They spawn every year since he he kind of stocked it about six, seven years ago, um, along with the originals. Oh, another bleep on the left, wind. And um, so yeah, he has got cages that you can put them in, but everyone's really lazy. So anyway, I mean, like that fish I caught yesterday would have been one of the ones that was caught maybe two, three years, uh, born two, three years ago, and they just they just grow like mad. Um, so I did have a take on the right hand rod. Um, I was fishing in the margin where I saw a fish roll. Well, it didn't roll; it proper boshed out. And um, I got in the morning, the, the bay alarm was, was just off it, and I was like, "What?" Well, so I had a few bleats, but because I'm quite far away from my rods because of how sloped this swim, swim's quite savage. You'll, you'll see that in a sec. So I went up to check it, kind of. I thought oh, I'll hit into it, and um, the line was all the way over there, um, sort of going towards the bay. So, and my back leg was stuck in like a, a, a much further out bed of weed. So, um, it's one of them things. It's it's not very weedy in front of us, and we because of the way that we're fishing, because we're so high up, we need to use back leads. Other we get one fish, and it wipes us all out, especially when we're fishing in double swims like me and Toby are. So it's one of them things. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's probably one of the scams because if it was a real big fish, it would have just kept on tearing off and tearing off and uh, it would have pulled that back there because it wasn't in the weed very much. So I think it was enough to move it a lap far, but not enough to real rip it off because it was one of the, if it was like a 20, even a double, it would have would have gone far. So I'm not too disappointed about that. Dad hasn't had anything over there. Um, yeah, I can say we are on the last, this, this is the last week that this lake's open. So we are kind of winter fishing now. Last week did quite a few fish. They were fishing in where my cousin was fishing, they, they had quite a few, I think they had uh, a couple of 40s each and a 50, so it's a bit like, uh, so maybe they out, maybe they fished it out. Um, so we're on the first morning, you can't panic too much, I've had one fish, but kind of, they seem to be on the munch from the patch reports, I'm hoping that they haven't kind of stopped off, I'd imagine we'll winkle a couple out. I had to, uh, I've got two two on the multi rig out out over a load of boilie where I had the fish from, and then up the other one I've got in the margin where I've seen fish roll on, on a solid bag. So we'll we'll see what happens. I'm basically what I'm going to be doing for the day is I'm going to be sort of I'll give it because the fish have been coming out in in the day, and this is my I am fishing on I'm fishing about six seven foot of water and about three foot of weed. He's, the owner doesn't think it's very weedy. Obviously, the people that have been fishing there, they've been giving the wrong information because there's not one single clear spot on the bottom. It is solid weed. It's fine. You can fish on top of it. You know, foam, soft hinge rigs, all that sort of stuff, bags. It's fine. You can get bites out of it, but you cannot feel a drop. And it is quite weird. I, like, I had a good lead around um, yesterday, but I will be later on getting the marker up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it to sort of late morning, probably like 11 o'clock-ish, and, and, then, and then I'll reel in, put a little bit of bait out, I've got my two stalking rods with me, and I'm going to go around and see if I can winkle one out. Let that re let that bait rest, have have a bit of grub, and then see if and then I'll, I'll do that for a couple of hours. Come back, have a good lead around for a couple of hours, see if I can find some predominant spots, see what the fish are doing, and uh, and then get ready and get them in for the night because it gets dark at about six, and then it's dark all the way. Well, it's dark for like sort of 13 hours, so <laughs> it's a lot of darkness at the moment. So, but that's that's the winter fishing for you. Um, it's luckily it's not as cold as what it is in the UK here at the minute. It's still cold, but it's not nowhere near as cold. Um, so there we go. That's what's happened so far. Hopefully we'll get amongst some of the. Hopefully the lads will start catching, and you know it will go smoothly. And hopefully there we go. Tight lines. Twenty four pounds and two, two ounces. ounces. Cool, it looks lovely quite a looking fish. Yeah, it's a it's a lovely fish. Quite, it looks chunky in this. Um, so what did you nail it on then, son? So I had it on uh, two grains of corn, two corns of yellow corn, just popped off the bottom. Simple knotless knot rig. And um, just, just towards the far bank, really. A couple of rod lengths off. PVA bag or no? Yeah, little PVA bag, just with some little... Let's have a look at its other side. Pellets, uh,
there she is, 24 pounds, two ounces. Let's get her back. Again, this is probably one of the ones that spawned on the first couple of years. Oh, it's it's Off it goes, into the depths. Lines. Well done, mate. So you've gone from 17 to 24. Now let's have a 30, and then a 40, and then a 50, and then a 60. <laughs> Can't really celebrate too much. It's only a only a twenty, but it's still nice to I'm it's still nice to see him getting caught. Them other fish you can feel when they're heavy. No, mine was staying a bit lower, like, but I got in close relatively quickly. Yeah, it's when I pull back on it is when you can tell whether they're lumps or not. I think. Oh. No! <sighs> uh... I'm a bit pay off. Yep, hook pull. Just came up as well. It was quite, yeah, it was bigger, wasn't it? Yeah, off, looked a bit longer. Huh? Yeah, it just hook pulled. It just came up to the surface and then it just hook pulled. That was a better fish as well. Bastard. It's when it when it plumes and you see the water and you see how and that's when you know if it's big or not. <laughs> if it does a bit of a plumage, you'll know. Yeah, if it's on the Yeah, look, can you see? Yeah. Do you see where the, how far away that was? Wow, camera just turned off. Thirty four pound on the nose. It's all right, isn't she? What did you have her on Ian? Uh one of these urban baits, I think. Nutcracker. Some special new hooks you got, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely fish. Quite well, nice looking. Fish ain't too bad either. <laughs> Alright, we're done. Start, Definitely. Was that that one you tipped off on the island? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Now you've cracked the. You've unlocked it, the method. <laughs> it's gonna go tearing up, tearing up. I bet you. The width of the shoulders, man. Right, guys, we've had this about half an hour ago. It's been in the sack. Um, bit of a story behind this one. <coughs> Fat thing, it's very well. It was pretty much 36 on the nose, but I cut it under, so we'll give it 35, 15. It's a fat, chunky old fish. Good colours on it, nice and orange. But it's actually, I called it on Toby's rod. He went off to have a shower. And I was guarding his rods for him. And it, and it, and it ripped off about 10 minute battle. And I, uh, yeah, got it in, then got it in the sack. But um, I said to him, look, I've got it in the sack for you. Have some pictures with it. But he said, no, nah, mate, it's your fish. You had it. So, can't really take the credit for it too much. Although I did get it in. And we're, um, oh, we'll have a look at her when she's in the water. Bloody hell, it's bloody heavy. Check its fins.
the rules that we normally roll by, but it's a bit of a mixed effort, really. Really nice and dark. Go on. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, beautiful. The colours on its back. Wow. There we go. Oh. Right guys, I'm just going to talk, for you, talk you through the um, solid bag rig presentation that I'm using here. Um, had, a, had a small fish on it last night. Uh, and because of the amount of weed that's here, I'm using solid bags um, on some of my rods. So, start off here, going down to, the, this is a, um, a soft leadless leader. Um, not the biggest amount of section of it, but it's really, really supple. Like you would see, if that was weed, it, would, it sits over. It's really good stuff actually. This is a Tas Tasca one. It's going down to... It's a three ounce lead and it's in its fish drop off style. Um, just to eject the lead every time you lose a f you pick up a fish. Down to just under three inch hook length, really small. Um, and that's a K KD rig presentation with a single grain of plastic maze on there. Um, nice and effective. So these are the, comp the components that you need. I really I really rate these. Uh, these are the core of solid bag system. Um, my favorite tape, Meltex. And quite old school that is now, but it's thicker and it ties lovely. And um, this is from Christon, the original boys. Um, yeah, we've got this lovely sort of pellet mix, three sizes of pellets in there. So what you do, so you pull one of these, um, one of these out. And there's lots of different ways how to do this. Um, I'm sure there's other people that do it differently, but this is just the way that I like to do it. So you get your rig starting it and you're getting it I start the hook I push it right down to the bottom of the bag I get it point and I point get the point and I put it right through just like that and you can kind of see there where your where your bait's gonna be get it in position now you get your little scoop and you start filling you get your first layer in up Oh, on the left hand. So the first slot here, and that's where you can really get an eye like you can see see it there. That's when you really sort of get it into position. Keep adding more scoop. I always do two scoops at a time because this is the medium size, but believe it or not, it's actually quite big. And each time. I pat it down severely because of that the hole that the hook um, made it, it allows the air to come out so I also make a couple of little ones on the sides just to help the air come out so now I get your nutcracker 40 miller and I'm just crumbling it up a little bit just for a little bit of added traction a few two of them not nothing major so you don't want to feed them up you just want to grab a bite again pat it down get it real tight another couple of couple of those and this is when I get I get it to about a quarter fill and this one I wedge in <laughs> getting a, a wedge in the lead there and then I tighten it like that and then I pat it right down keep patting it and you'll see it go it, it keeps dropping like that Finish it off with a couple more. Push them right down. Get it as tight as you can. Keep pushing down. Twist. 
I twist it quite a bit and then I've already got a bit of pre-cut and can you see the thickness of this tape? It's really thick. Um, so it, it's, um, it gives a real strong knot and I like to wrap it around one, two, three, four. Simple double, just do like a double granny. One, two. I mean, you see already that is rock solid. Right, guys, I've just had this one. Was it, what is it, 35 what? 3510. 3510, mirror. Nice old battle. There we are. Nailed it on the nutcracker pop up on the multi rig as usual. I only just put it out really, it's only been out for about an hour. I've put six bombs out over the top, the crushed nutcracker and the liver cracker. And now this is the result. Oh, absolute unit. Oh, we'll put it back in there, get her in the water, get some water shots. You guys, here she is again, 3510. Oh, gorgeous mirror carp, bro dear. She's lovely to go back. Oh, I'm go back now. One last look at her. Look, look at the shoulders, look. <laughs> Make sure she's ready. There she goes, there we go. Right guys, just going to talk you through the bait mix I'm putting out. I am topping the odd bit out with the thrown stick, but I'm mainly putting it out via spawn because of the, there's a, some birds taking it, but I just like the spread of it. Um, this is the mix. I'll pick it up here for you. Um, so it's so it's mostly nutcracker, but you've got quite a bit of spicy fish in there now. So the first day or so, or well the first couple of days, I'm using the nutcracker only. Then I started introducing sort of... 10-20% of spicy red, I've sort of increased it kind of about half now. Um, just to see if the uh, mix up, this, I've been um, cracking a few up with the old uh, crusher. So if you can see, if you go like that, right down the bottom, you've got quite a bit of, bit of crumb stuff. Um, we're sort of late, late autumn, early winter really, isn't it? Because we're, you know, we're almost in November. So what I've been doing, just to make them a little bit more attractive, is I start off getting low on this. I've got a few more bottles over there. Is uh, just to sprinkle the old nutcracker glug, nice and sweet. It smells like buttery maple loveliness. And then sprinkle the spicy fresh fish glug. This stuff really is strong, sticky as well. And then I finish it off with a nice dash of liver powder and you'll see what it gets like here but have a nice sprinkle there look it marinate them up in it this pot seems to be going forever I don't go shy with it either and then get them all mixed up you have a look at that That just sits out there with your, with your pop up over the top or your bag, solid bag over the top, little pop up in it, depending on what I'm like I say, I've moved over um, two on the multis and one on the solid bag. And I've, when I've been walking, I've been trying to do a bit of stalking, I've been stalking them out, trying to stalk them out with the older solid bag rig, but there it is. Get on it. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see that. Can barely lift it, but that's just the first 40 pound fish of the trip. What'd you catch it on, Dad? Not far. I ain't checked, Bill. <laughs> I ain't checked. Right. <laughs>